Welcome to this demo video on using Attic 5 Pro SE to take an automated bare metal recovery backup of a Windows server. The server I'm using today is running Server 2012 Standard Edition and it's running on my Hyper-V platform. I have three disks. My system disk is on the C drive. I have an application installed on the D drive and I'm backing up both of those drives. I need an additional drive to dump my backup onto so you can see I have also an E drive that is rather large where um, the backup is actually only about 12 gig in size so there's quite a lot of free space on that drive. I have Addict 5 Pro Server Edition installed and um, using version 702 um, and I've only selected to include my Windows Image Backup folder for backup. Uh, this is on the E drive, and that's all I need for my bare metal recovery. With the script plugin installed, I can automate my backup to include the current image of my server when the backup runs. My script runs at the start of the backup. Let's take a look at the script that I'm using. With the server backup feature added to the server, <clears throat> I can utilize the wbadmin command line utility. This is taken from um, this script is taken from an Addix 5 knowledge base article. Um, if you amend the source and target drives to your particular environment, you'll be able to use it. I'll make it available in the text included with this clip. While you're preparing your backup, it is important to make a note of how your drives and volumes are set up. You'll need this information for when you're doing a restore. I have a C and D volume on a 127 gig drive. So when I do my restore, I need to make sure that at least that same size drive is available or larger. Although I have a good amount of free space, I need to provision the full size as that's, requ that's what's required to do the uh, restore of the image. I have restored the whole Windows Image Backup folder to a network share. In a real world scenario, you could do this by installing Addict 5 Pro onto a server or workstation and connecting to the backup account to do the restore. After that, I'll create a new server using my Hyper-V manager. I always like to keep my guest machine files in a single folder location, um, so I'll create a new folder for that. I've done a test before, so we'll call this one test restore v2. I'm going to allocate um, a gig of RAM. And I'm also going to use, um, make sure that I have the correct size drive need to have at least 127 gig drive available so that's what I'll use. I have a server 2012 ISO ready to boot from so I'll attach that ISO image um, to my virtual machine and booting from that image I can start the recovery process. In the initial setup, once it's booted from the attached ISO image, um, I'll select to repair your computer using the troubleshooting tools, uh, select to recover using an image. If you cancel the initial wizard, you can then assign the correct recovery image using the advanced setup. My image is on a network share, 
You could also use a USB drive or a lo another locally attached drive if you have the drivers for that. I'm going to connect to my network share though. connected to the share but it hasn't found the image um, right this was because I need to rename the image folder to the correct name um, during the backup the addx5 script gave it a generic name um, so that it could optimize patching on this folder so I'll just uh, rename it back to the correct name and refresh the selection to see if it's available that's found it now I'll select that image for restore and complete the re-image wizard. I'm going to stick forward a little, uh, skip forward a few times during this clip, but um, the whole re-imaging process, uh, once I'd selected the correct drive, took me about uh, 20 minutes to complete. It'd be a good idea for you to test um, this in your environment to make sure that. Um, you can recover in a reasonable amount of time over the network um, or alternatively try using a USB drive or another locally attached drive um, to optimize your recovery window. Um, another note also obviously if you're doing this on your production network make sure that you disable the network card so that you don't bring that server online in your production environment. And that's the restore completed. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me using our website or email.